we're gonna we're gonna make the uh, the taco melt. The idea for this one came from I mean here we are on a essentially what is known in LA as a taco truck, and this was kind of our fun play towards let's put a taco out there, um, but in grilled cheese style. So we'll start with the taco meat itself. Uh, we have one uh, one white onion, and we dice that up nice and small. We'll put into this as well some uh, fresh jalapenos and garlic. And when you're cooking things with uh, both onions and garlic, a lot of people will just throw them all in at once. Uh, my suggestion is always throw your onions in first. Onions have a higher moisture content. Um, garlic will burn quicker. So you want to get your onions started. Throw your garlic in next. And then we lead over to the, uh, to the jalapenos. So we'll get these into the pan. Some olive oil. That's how much olive oil you're putting in there. This one is about a quarter cup. Um, the ground beef does have its own fat, so this is just to get it started. Once it starts to render out, you'll have plenty of, uh, plenty of fat to cook with. Fresh your onions. And then we've got our jalapeno. Now this is a very large jalapeno. I'm only going to use half of this. A lot of this is just kind of where you go with your, uh, with your heat. You can leave your jalapenos a little more, uh, a little on the larger dice. If you like that heat, and get it, get a bite every now and then. Mince them up if you want. Get it, just kind of the flavor through. These you can put in the same time as the garlic with the jalapenos. If you find yourself very sensitive, um, you can get some gloves. Um, that stuff gets under your nails, and it is oh. not a fun thing to have. So while we're cooking this, we're going to uh, make some fresh pico de gallo. So we'll just take some fresh Roma tomatoes and dice those up. A lot of people will remove their seeds from a pico de gallo. I personally like to leave it in there. Uh, it gives it a little bit more, more juice. And that being that we're going, this is all going into a grilled cheese, we want to dice this a little finer than your, your normal pico de gallo. Um, otherwise, it just creates too much air pockets in, in a sandwich. So our tomatoes. Once again, that jalapeno. Now again, I like heat, so I leave the seeds in for my pico. I took it out for the uh, for the meat. Otherwise, you get a little too much going on all over the place. Also, if you're cutting your jalapenos in the middle of a recipe, that heat that we warned you about on your hands is on your board. Lemon, we'll take that off of there. Nice wash. Otherwise, everything you cut from that point forward will have some heat. A little bit of garlic. Once again, fine mince on that. You can use a garlic press. I'm not a big fan of garlic presses, personally. I think they squeeze all the, the, the oil of the garlic itself out. Um, but they have those little chopper things, um, work. which work out phenomenally well. Um, little red onion. Again, keep all this kind of on the, the finer dice. And once you start to get that translucent coming through, you don't want to cook them too much because you still have to add your ground beef. So we're going to throw that in there now. Being cold, that's going to bring the heat of the pan down, so you raise the heat up a little bit. And you just cook that through. We'll finish the spices at the end. Some fresh washed cilantro. We finish the pico de gallo off. A couple of limes. And finally, just a little bit of salt. Just a touch of white pepper. You get the pepper in there from the uh, jalapeno, so you don't need a lot. That's just a quick toss. This you can make ahead of time. It's uh, this is this you know being such a fresh. You want this as crisp as possible. So this will last two or three days in the refrigerator. That's about it. Okay, once your meat is almost cooked, what we do is we get all our spices in there. So one by one, we've got some uh, uh, ground cumin. Cuminos. Be careful because that can get a little bit strong. Some dried oregano, one of the few times I will use a dried herb. But dry oregano seems to work a little bit better. Uh, chili powder. Hey, there's plenty of you know fine uh, pre-mixed taco seasonings and you could definitely do that. That's not what we do. <laughs> a little white pepper. 
little cayenne pepper, and some fresh ground black pepper. Finish that with a little salt. Once our, that's all done, I'm going to throw some fresh cilantro in there. Once the cilantro is in there, I don't like to cook it too much. But enough to where the heat, the heat of the meat will carry the flavor through. So while we let that sit, what we'll do next is we take some tortillas and we throw them into the hot oil. You get them crispy just like it would be a, like a crispy taco. We just throw them in there. Let them come to the top. Right now my oil is sitting at about 380 degrees. Flip them a couple of times. But you want to make sure that they stay flat. If they fold over, it's not going to work with the sandwich that well. Uh, once the bubbling kind of stops, that's when you know it's pretty good. I like to cook them a little bit extra. They are going in with a lot of uh, a lot of wet products inside the sandwich, so if they're not if they're not cooked very crisp, you're going to end up with uh, with a soggy tortilla, in there and you're just wasting the time frying it. When they're done. Put them on a paper towel. Let the oil bleed off. Okay, now it's time for the the assembly of the taco melt. So we take our our bread. Again, with the special mayonnaise butter mix, generously, but not too generous. You want to be able to just see the texture of the bread through, so right about like that. Okay, so what we will do first is we've got uh, some of the Tillamook pepper jack cheese, which works out perfect for this. You can find a lot of the, the Americanized tacos out there. I'd like to take two slices of this one, put that on the bread, then we top that with the crispy tortillas, which serve as a, a nice little bowl to hold everything there. With our taco meat that we've made. You want to have this a little on the cooler side. It will immediately make your, uh, your tortilla soggy. Yeah. And if you don't want to fry the tortillas yourself, they sell the, the tostada tortillas, and you totally can use those. Then what we'll do is we've got some uh, tortilla cheese. Break that up. It's a very dry cheese, so it, it crumbles really well. It adds a little bit more of an authentic Mexican flavor to it as well. Sprinkle that on top of the taco meat. You can even go with a ricotta salada. Um, it's a nice dry cheese. They make ranchero cheese, which you can find almost anywhere. Then, the wonderful avocado. This, what we'll do is we'll just slice it nice and thin. A couple slices inside your sandwich on top of the cheese. Keep it towards the middle. The uh, tortilla will give you a false sense of edges. First, we're going to top it with our fresh pico de gallo. Oh, it looks so good. Who doesn't love tacos? Ooh. Taco Tuesday. Game day. Now we top it with our pepper jack cheese. Two more slices. Because as we like to say on the truck, there's almost never enough cheese. Yep. Give that a little bit of a push. Crunch. Top it, buttered side out, and then on the grill. Here we go. This is a classic example of a reason to use your bacon press. You've got a lot of stuff in here, and if you don't press it down, you're gonna have a cold interior. Your cheese won't melt that well. Just, if you've got your griddle at about 350 degrees, um, that golden brown that comes up, that's pretty much your, your barometer, it's ready. Um, check for your cheese just starting to melt against the bread. Remember, there's still gonna be some more heat happening. So it doesn't need to be uh, fully melted on, the, on the, the part that is on the griddle. If you've got the panini press and you're looking to, to make the grilled cheeses on that panini press, put it in the closet. You've got a griddle. It's, the, it's a much better finished product. Um, you don't have a squish sandwich. Your bread still will have some bounce to it. The panini presses in their, in their place are great, but when you're using them for, for you know, the grilled cheese that we do, end up with a smush sandwich that doesn't have the, the, the balance of texture and flavor that, that you really want in a grilled cheese sandwich. If you don't have a griddle, a, a frying pan will work. You know, simple is sometimes often the best. Okay, so now we're going to take our taco melts. Now we like to let the sandwiches rest a little bit. Again, you're dealing with uh, some hot cheese that if you go in too quickly, if you go to cut the sandwich too quickly, what happens is it, it, everything will, will leave that you've, you've tried to keep inside of as you've been cooking it, as well as your bread will get compressed, and it's just, it's not a, it's just not a great finished product. So now that they've rested, what we'll do 
is once again, just a nice light slice. You still get that crunch of the tortilla in there. Feeling like you're over at the, the local taco shop. Oh, so. And there it is. <laughs> so excited. I need a bite of one of these. One of my favorites. The taco melt. The one that makes taco trucks jealous. Thank you.